Cannon unit is really important to the police department uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, but the most important one to me is officer safety. Um, the dogs provide an area of safety that no other tool can provide, uh, especially these days with the current environment. Uh, we always talk about de-escalation. Uh, it's not obvious to the public, but a police canine is the biggest de-escalation tool that we have. 99% uh, of the time that we use our canine, the only thing that is needed is the canine's presence. Canine shows up, usually it's over. Uh, the vast majority of suspects that are apprehended by the canine simply give up. Uh, I know the chases and the bites make the news, but 99 out of 100, we get out of the car, the dog lets off one bark, it's over. So I, I started by kind of joining the police department and getting into the police service that way. Um, as time went on, I got to, just like any new officer, I got to meet all the different specialized units, different facets of law enforcement, I guess, as a good way to say it, um, and kind of see what they're all about. And one that really interested me um, was the canine unit. Um, just watching the dogs work, watching what the handlers got to be a part of and got to partake in. Um, you get to be a part of a lot more adventurous outings and things like that. Um, so when the when a position became available, I put in for it. It's kind of like applying for a, a job within a job. Um, and I was selected and went through a handler school. Um, and been here ever since. Training for the dogs, uh, by state standards, we're required to train at, at least 16 hours a month. Uh, we generally exceed that. Uh, the dogs, especially our dogs, are dual purpose, so they're trained in apprehension and narcotics detection. So it's just a matter of always improving their training and make sure they're reliable. Uh, but a minimum of 16 hours a month. Timo is a, he's a dual purpose um, police canine, right? So uh, Timo either can help locate narcotics or he can help locate people essentially. Um, and, and in terms of locating people, sometimes that's tracking them, um, whether someone runs from the police or if it's um, like a lost or missing person as well. Um, and he's also, um, he, he's also an apprehension dog. So he can actually help protect me, protect other officers. I protect people from anybody that's trying to cause harm to anyone. My dog, my dog's a German Shepherd. His name is Lubo. Uh, he'll turn four here next month. He's a dual purpose dog. He does a apprehension and narcotics. Um, he's a good boy. Uh, he's a very stable dog. He's a very calm dog. Uh, he's very social. He's never met a human he doesn't like. Uh, but when it's time to work, it's time to work. He has no qualms about it. It's definitely a unique position because uh, obviously we're exposed to a lot of high-risk calls. That's what we do. But on the same, same token, uh, I like to look at my job as protecting other officers. Uh, canine stuff is really cool. I really enjoy it. I like working with the dogs. I like working in a specialized unit. Uh, but ultimately, my job is the public safety and the safety of other officers. I think it's really important to remember um, that our, our canine is a, is a tool, right? So um, a big thing that um, just like approaching any other dog is you have to remember when the dog is working, he's at work doing his job. Um, just like maybe um, people don't want to be interrupted while they're, you know, studying or doing something at work. Um, same thing when our dogs are working, um, we don't want to really be interrupted with that specific process. Um, that doesn't mean people can't meet the dog. It's just something that once they're not working and they've kind of switched off is a term we like to use and they're in that just a dog moment, that's a good time to ask to meet a dog. Uh, every canine is different. Uh, police canines are not inherently dangerous. Uh, they're not. They're social. They can be social. They can be dangerous too. Uh, but if by communicating with the handler, it'll, it'll keep everybody safe. And that goes with any other canine that you encounter on the, on the street. Uh, police canines are probably more stable because they're highly trained and they're highly controlled, which is not usually the, 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 the standard with pets. Uh, but don't be afraid of police canines. Just make sure you communicate well with the handler. And I, I can talk for my dog, Lubo. Nothing he loves more than seeing a bunch of kids come because he knows he's going to get played with and going to get petted. So he's happy about it. So our, our typical training day, um, we try and mostly hit every discipline the dog does at least a little bit. Um, and it'll kind of vary depending on each dog. You know, every dog is different. Um, so we'll kind of focus on maybe what that dog is needing more work with or struggling with at that time to kind of build that skill. Um, but we, we do everything with our dogs from basic obedience like you would see from a, a pet dog um, to apprehend, we train apprehension. We wear the big fluffy bite suit that people love. Um, 
uh, agility. We'll do obstacles with our dogs, um, and as well as uh, we pretty we're pretty routine with our narcotics training, um, just to keep that skill as accurate as possible. Right. Um, same thing with locating people, so tracking or um, building searches as well. Um, it depends on a lot on the dog on how long they'll work um, and and what kind of age we get them. Right. Um, the average service life is, I mean, it can be up seven to nine years, depending on the breed and the type of uh, job the dog does. Um, sometimes they'll retire early if there's a medical reason, um, but typically about nine, ten years old is kind of the average for dual purpose dogs. So when a canine retires, um, we do our best to find them a home that they can retire in. Um, typically, that means they're going to retire with their handler, right? Um, we have a handler in the agency who has a retired dog, and we have several other handlers going back with previous canines that have kept their dogs. Um, so typically, that's what will happen. Um, there's also organizations out there for some certain dogs that maybe that can't work, whether it's a family or a work situation. Um, there's a lot of organizations out there as well that'll help home those dogs with people that are capable of um, you know, providing our dogs with the type of life and retirement they deserve. Uh, it's, it's a fun job. You know, every day is kind of, kind of the same and kind of different. Um, every day I get to come to work and I get to come in with my best buddy, um, and you know, then I get to take him home with me too. Um, so it's it's always fun. Uh, there's days that are challenging and days that are easy, uh, but every day is a, a good time to me.